Good morning, everyone. This is Helena. So let's give a couple of second people to join and then we will start our webinar. All right, let's start. Hi, my name is Elena, and I'm going to record this webinar because I have around 10 people to sign to this webinar, and then I'm going to send you this version. So our agenda will be the following. Uh, I will go through demo, and it will take, I'll try to finish within 45 minutes. Uh, main functionality, don't go to details, deep details, but then I will have, I will um, ask you to unmute and you will be able to ask any questions you might have. All right, so moment you install, let's start. <laughs> moment you install our application, you're going to have it under extensions. So the best place to install our add-ons or product uh, under Google, Google Workspace Marketplace. So when you type JCon, we will be there. So when you install application, you will have JCon for zero menu options. So what I want to mention, let me sign out and then you will see what you're going to uh, have. You're going to have a couple menu options which allow you to uh, sign in uh, our Google uh, spreadsheet to Xero and connect to Xero. If you don't have a payroll or if you do have payroll options, so you will choose one of these options. So for me, let me show you. I have demo company, AU demo company. So I will click on Xero, this AU payroll, and we will have extra menu options. So extra reports which uh, you can create. All right, this is how it goes. I have three organization already connected and I will continue these three organizations. And as soon as uh, Xero successfully authenticate us as a GCon company, you will have this message. You will successfully authenticate this Xero.com uh, and this, this allow us to create secure channel and pull data. So what I want to mention before I start diving to demo, we, for each and every request, we connect to Xero organizations, multiple entities, how many you have, and we pull data on request. It can be manually, it can be through automation, but we don't save your data locally. So we don't want to be liable data. We don't want to have any, uh, any hackers on data. So basically we don't save your data in any of our servers. So each and every request will bring new set of data. All right, so let's dive what we have in application. We have three big modules, I would say. Now it's four big modules. So you will be able to create reports. So reports, we have three parts of reports. You can create standard reports. It's predefined templates and you can adjust them using different, different filtering. You can create your own reports that we call it raw data. So you will be able to select objects or table. Let's say it can be invoices, it can be transactions, bank transactions, it can be journal entries, select certain attributes and create your own reports. So for uh, create own reports, we call it custom reports. We have a couple options here. This is your financial tables. This is your audit or historical uh, tables uh, and the process and concept very similar. And I'm going to dive inside. Design assets, you can uh, create assets project. And this is your payroll. If you have UK, New Zealand, you will have ability to do it. UK, uh, US, uh, Xero used to have it. Now they don't have API. That's why for US it's not available. And so, and our newly created function, consolidated reports. I will dive and show you how it works. So let's start the standard reports. Uh, each and every um, uh, click on menu option will allow you to create template. Uh, so now we create 
template for a standard report, you have category very similar like zero has. As you can see, the most popular reports that, that, that we offer, account transaction, set of aged reports, those templates and reports created internally by our company. We put all the logic inside. Uh, for example, for age receivables, we don't only pull invoices, but you have the overpayment, prepayment, payment, C and so everything there. So it's our logic. Some of the report we pull as is, for example, balance sheet, a set of uh, profit and loss for request and your uh, chosen, chosen filtered option, we pull data directly from Xero. So, and then new uh, new modules, what we have, it's a budget. It's um, not completely new. It's developed a year ago, Moment Zero Open API for us. So we do have budget and um, a set of trial balance reports and absolutely, uh, absolutely useful for our customers. Some customers come only for purchase orders. Just as you know, Xero doesn't have those type of reports. So, and quotes. So as an example, I will choose more popular. It's definitely p &L. So this is how it looks. So moment you choose a report, this is how you create template. So the main feature here that you should understand, I'm, I'm sitting a little bit here because it's a concept through whole application. You have ability to change date range. So as of now, if you can see, it's set up dynamic range by default this month. What does it mean? It means when you automate your PL, this month come as a March, next month will come April, May, and so on. So basically, you don't have to change the template, it dynamically will be changing. So another concept here, you have ability to switch to static date range. What does it mean? You nail down your date. So it means you refresh the data, data will be changing, date range will stay as is. So this is third. Uh, third um, available solution for date range and more advanced solutions. So let's say some pre-populate value, values exist, but let's say you don't have the uh, specific date range, what you're looking for. Sometimes we have clients who run PNL every three days. So what are you doing in this case? You have reference. So if we call it cell reference, you can put any formula on your field. As you can see, I'm using M2 cell. So I can put any formula, let's say today uh, minus one, right? And maybe here I will put this result plus five, right? Random numbers. But this is again dynamically built because you build formula inside, right? And in your template, you do reference to this field. You use this icon. So you use this icon, you use notation. So make sure the, uh, the, of, uh, it's uh, exactly the way how I, our application understand and you insert. So this is reference to first uh, date range. And I move my cursor here, and this is reference to the last date range. So what that's give you is give you dynamically built, very customized solution, okay? So for our, for our purpose, I will uh, put as a uh, pre-populate pre uh, today's month. So it's p &L. Now accounts. This is that many accounts you will have and we pull from uh, Xero. So now a trick, small trick here. If you select all this first, very first checkbox. So what does it mean? If you create new uh, account in chart of accounts in your entities, we will automatically pull this account and corresponding uh, outstanding of values. If you don't pull, don't check this all, you can nail down accounts and we will all the time put account that you selected. So this is very, um, very nice uh, option to know, depends on your business needs. So account type, cash transaction through false, compare this uh, multiple periods up to 22, 24. If you need to have more years and you want to keep it for last 10 years, you have to create multiple templates, multiple templates. So sort previous report layout. A report the layout very important in the case. If you want to have traditional layout, you will see your revenue, 
minus uh, cost of goods sold, operating expenses. And uh, then you will have net total. This is traditional layout. If you want to build any BI solution, let's say data Google Studio or Tableau, Microsoft BI, you will use historical layout and we open up uh, all data for you. It looks ugly on the spreadsheet, but it will help you to build dashboards and graph and um, tables, whatever you need to present your financial reports to your customers. So we're going for traditional layout, uh, show you today, true, false, region options. For me, it's a tracking category, okay? So this is first option, select the report and parameter. This is how it looks. Now we move to change pool settings. So this section responsible on uh, of how your data look like in your spreadsheet. So for example, if you want to open new tab all the time, this is your checkbox. If you want to display report title and create deep link, it's a link to Xero itself, you can do it. Let's say you have you want to have your own font size of the um, size of the cell color filtering, and you want to keep your formatting after we refresh your data, this is very nice, uh, very, very good uh, checkbox to check. If you want to allocate your multiple templates, just one after another, and the reason why you create multiple templates, for example, one template's uh, responsible for data from 2018, and you don't want to refresh it, or you want to refresh it monthly. So this is one, uh, one way, uh, one template you create. The next template can be appended below this template. So if you, in this, um, in this kind of scenario, you will use a pan to previous template option, and it will help you to view all data as a one set of data. You will not see separations. And definitely you need to uncheck retrieve header so you can have full data. And template name. Even though it says it's optional, I would highly recommend to use it. Let's assume you have five uh, entities, five organizations, and you want to differentiate them somehow, right? And I would say I will put PNL organization number one, and this is what I'm doing. And my organization number one, it's a demo AU company. Uh, please don't use this scheduling. I will show you another way through workflows, how to schedule your refresh. And a multi-currency converter. You can convert reports based on uh, based on certain rate. So we will, uh, we will uh, uh, release a new enhancement and I will show you how it will be look like in April. But for now, you have to understand we can convert uh, any of your reports, standard reports to any currency. All right, so I'm ready to execute. I spend so much time to execute that, <laughs> but this is concept. So as soon as you understand that, you will be comfortable with that tool. It's not simple tool as a one button click, but moment you understand, you have your hands around, you will be good. So now you can see we have traditional layout. This is my demo company, and this is my account and net profit. Okay, this is PNL for one company. Now, how to modify this? template. So you go to gconfig0, you click update, modify, delete template. And then on the right side, you will have window, you double click, this is link, and then you can put any modification. So what you can do here, you can, you can save uh, your template, or you can update and execute. Save, you save as a structure locally, and update and execute, you save your template or your structure, and you pull new set of data, all right? So now the another set of concept, another concept, how to save the uh, template and reuse it. Reusability, it's very important because you don't want to recreate it all the time from scratch. So they have a button here, save and cloud. So what will allow you? It will allow you, I'm going to show you how to reuse the same template for the different Xero organization. 
So now I save it. Save vSafe structure in our cloud environment, but it's only structure. We don't save any of your data. So now the next step will be for you, you switch organization. So this is nice functionality. You switch organization. I will switch for you now. I have some organizations, uh, dummy one, which doesn't have much data, but I can, I can show you uh, that I don't have data. So I switch really. And then I would like to place PNL in the same in the same place, and I will start from this specific cell Q1. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to extension gconfig zero. I load cloud templates from my workspace. This is your workspace, and I'm going to search for my template. This is my report. So this is my report on the bottom. As soon as I'm here, I want to show you how you can share this template within your team. So you can share the specific person by typing email address, or you can share the within, within whole uh, team uh, means you have our group license. So, but this is uh, your our template. I load it, I have to load it, and I have to execute it once. So this is this is condition. You have to execute once, and then you will have it available. So this is my static date range. I want to say, okay, I don't want for this company to have 12 period, I'll go by five. And then what I'm going to do, I will use reference field, the same concept. You can type it here, and or you can put a reference field. And I will definitely change it to organization number two and execute it. So now I will have zeros because I don't have much data there, but you can see now we set up two templates for two organizations in the same tab. So definitely you can open new, uh, new spreadsheet, you can open new tab and place it. So what I'm going to do now, I still have a lot of stuff to show you. I will switch organization to my demo company because I have data there. And then my next step, I'm going to show you how to automate the process. It's very important because this is why people use us. So automation, I would say it's a key uh, why you, you come here and watch my webinar. So I will go to gconfig zero and we have many options which call automation. So please don't use data operation scheduler. It's deprecated. Deprecated means we're supporting that for our existing customer, I would say old customer, but please start using create workflow. So it's a nice concept. It's advanced mechanism inside and the automation uh, allow you to pull data a big chunk of data for 20, 25 minutes. So this process can work 20, 25 minutes internally to pull all your data. That's why it's very important to use automation versus manual. I want to say Google has limitations six minutes. If the, within six minutes, we are not able to pull your data from zero, it will give you timeout. So automation is very important. So let me put workflow number one. It's the name of this workflow. This is description. And next, my next step is add templates. So I'm, I'm showing you PNL. So it's a drag and drop. So it's very easy. Now I'm selecting two uh, reports. Why I combine them in within one workflow? Because I want them to be refreshed at the same time. So now if you have another reports, you can, it's a good idea to split them over time. Let's say bills and voices, you can refresh that every three hours. PNL probably daily. Aged reports, yes, daily. Don't forget, zero has limits to 5,000 calls per day. You exceed this limitation, you have to wait for next day. So for me, PNL daily. So I'm going to uh, pay your attention for this small gear. It's right here, which uh, responsible for notification, your notification. And what I would say, if you want to be notified um, or receive a mail in case of error, this is good stuff. Sometimes you have a lot of processes which just go one after another. And you will say, if something happened in your refresh process, I want everything get stopped. Then you stop next cycle. It depends again on your business rules. So I prefer uh, to send for myself, send an email notification in case of error. I apply, I will do the same 
for my second template. And now the key is scheduler. This is straightforward. So again, uh, be mindful. What are you scheduling and frequency? Uh, p &L, three hours, four hours, five hours. Yeah, maybe, but the most reasonable I will set up as a daily. So I can set up daily, one, 2 a.m. Perfect, my time. You can do it weekly, monthly, a uh, couple, couple days in the week uh, based on your rules. Uh, another nice feature here, emails. So if you want to create a spreadsheet per your client, per customer, right? And you want to deliver uh, the result of your reports, you can do it through this function. Basically, you put your uh, customer's email here, nice subject, nice email, and what they will get. You have options. So you either can send them through email, they will receive email as a spreadsheet link. So it means they open the same spreadsheet and they see what you generate for them. We can convert it whole file to Microsoft um, Excel, or it can be CSV file, is less popular, and PDF file. So now be cautious here. If you create for yourself as accounting firm uh, consolidated reports and you have multiple entities, so make sure you don't send one specific clients, right? It's only for you. If you need to notify your customer, you create separate spreadsheet per customer, right? So make sure they don't see each other data. But this is straightforward, but be careful here. Alerts. Alerts, it's a, a little bit more heavy functionality. Uh, I helped a couple of my customers create alert. Again, if you meet certain threshold, let's say your client want to see uh, invoices, and as a reminder, if, uh, this whole spreadsheet can be sent uh, for um, the specific customers if invoice they do happen in a couple of days. This is how you set up alerts. So two days before day two, they receive uh, your spreadsheet and they say, oops, all my uh, set of my invoices, they uh, due in a couple of days, I have to make a payment. So this is nice application of this functionality. Automatic backup. Uh, this uh, In this functionality, we create a um, snapshot or backup file in your Google Drive. I would suggest, yeah, maybe a good idea to do it once per month, so maybe every two weeks, and it will be keep new file as a new file in your Google Drive in case if zero is down, Amazon, uh, AWS is down like we, we had it in January, right? It was a couple uh, incidents there. Or uh, any reason, internet is down, you still have your date and your drive. So this is what we have. Apply and execute. As a template, you can uh, feel like we create template of how handle your templates. And what I'm going to do now, I will execute it for you and you will see what we create for you. I go to automation and set uh, and select update, modify, delete workflows. And if you create 10 or 20 workflows, or everything will be here. So I will double click on this link. This is a link. And it will bring for me template. And what I'm going to do, I will execute it. So basically what we're doing inside, we will create a log file for you. And it's very important because it's, it will give you whole logs or whole stats, what happening. And then you can make a decision, right? What to do about it. So now, as you can see, this window will be closed as soon as whole process will stop. Let's wait for two seconds. And what you can see now, one, two, three, done. So this is how we pull workflow number one. This is how we execute first template. You remember we call it PNL organization number one, and it's successfully executed. And this is organization number two, successfully executed. Now, if everything success, you understand your data is uh, fresh and it. It, you can walk this all the data. So if it's not successfully executed, you have options. You have options either uh, refresh it manually, you can refresh it for the current tab or refresh it for whole uh, spreadsheet. So if I click um, on the uh, current spreadsheet, you will see that type of windows and the green message will say, okay, it's refreshed uh, manually successfully. So this is we call manual refresh, right? 
if you feel your next cycle uh, will be coming in the three hours, I would say, yeah, wait for next cycle. If you will see error in your log file, in your log file means right here, instead of success, you will have error. So two options, basically, either you run refresh manually or you wait for next cycle, right? And you will see if it's, uh, if issue get fixed. All right, so this is, uh, this is a concept for standard reports. So now I'm going to show you how to create your own custom reports based on raw data. And as an example, I like to have design accounting reports, but all other options works very similar. So moment you understand one, you're comfortable with everything. So this is how many tables or objects we have. This is your chart of accounts. This is bank transactions, most popular. This is budgets, budget that you uh, load uh, in manually in zero itself because we don't have API to do upload. So uh, contact invoices, um, uh, prepayment, payment, checking categories, manual journals. So this is most uh, uh, most uh, famous. So this is what you have. I select invoices. And those are my uh, attribute and embedded tables, embedded objects. It's kind of object within object. So you can put, you can select invoices, amount due, amount pay. You can select, okay, I want to have contact, contact uh, first name, contact last name. See, I'm very... I'm very selectively selecting all these attributes because it's ton of them and more attribute you choose, the more expensive code become. This is your line items. I will choose all of them. I want to show you. And uh, prepayment, overpayment, I will keep it. Status. Status zero has very defined statuses. It's a draft, authorized, or waiting for payment, deleted, voided, paid. So only six of them. Type. So I want to talk a little bit about type. When you pull invoice object, uh, Xero has only one interface, only one API for invoices, which is responsible for invoices and bills. So here, be careful. If you're talking about invoices, you will select your type. This is your selection category, and it will have two options, receivable. So this, when you choose receivables, don't forget to add it. You're talking about invoices. If you, it doesn't matter for you, want to see bills and invoices, it will bring you account uh, uh, receivables and payables. If you talk about payables, please make sure you put payables, all right? So internally, I'll come back to my selection level. Internally, we create select query. If somebody familiar with this uh, SQL language, so this is select query, we selecting certain attributes from invoice table, and then we build where condition. We put filtering and then order by. Very simple select statement. So now again, the same option here, you can move to dynamic. You can select, um, you can select static. I will go a little bit in July. Maybe I'll put first of July. And let me talk about these options here. This is straightforward icon where you allow you to select everything. And select everything means attributes. Then you open up structure, you expand the structure. It means all your uh, embedded objects will be open. So you can see internal attributes. And this is deselect. And this is, uh, I would say, change column order is the most important feature here because what it does, it allows you to move fields in the order. And what does it mean? Now I have invoice ID in the column A. And after I refresh data, it will stay as is. So it's very important to know that you do have this ability. So this is my select statement. Change pool settings, the same, uh, the same um, uh, concept behind you. Uh, I keep original formatting. This is how my data look like. I, if I need to append to previous templates, I have, I am able to do that. Uh, this is my select. I said I want to have only invoices here. That's why I uh, select receivables and order by. Order by, I can say, okay, I want to have it by date maybe ascending order. And I want to create new tab 
and it's checked for me and I execute. So again, two things happen. Oops, what did I do? Let me do very nicely. I'll do very nicely this time. I will put previous here and execute nicely. So what I do here, I create template or structure for invoices, which later I can automate. And then I pull data from my demo account. So this is what happened. And I'm going to, it's automatically will create new tab and you will see the result. I don't think I do have a lot of data, but it's take time to, to pull it. Sometimes it's speed of your internet. Sometimes it's amount of data. <clears throat> so we'll wait. So while we're waiting, my next step will be, okay, here is, here is a uh, data, what do you see? If you can see invoice ID on the first column, this is invoice number. Those are my line items. <coughs> Status types, as you can see, I put invoices. So my next big uh, module, <coughs> which I'm going to cover, responsible for upload data. So now you can create set of data in your Google uh, sheet and upload it to uh, Xero accounts. So we're going from download now till, <coughs> till now we did only download. So we will take care upload now. And for this reason, I prepare some data. So make sure we don't uh, waste much time. This is again, this is invoice data and I will change the name mm, invoice number to have it unique. Let me put like this. <clears throat> Sorry, apologize. So this is my invoice number. I can change date here. I will have 0315. Uh, I will copy this. It's again, it's my invoice, this multiple line items. And let me put day due the same for, for easiness. And I highlight my data. So basically the first thing what I did, I prepared data. But eventually what you should do first, uh, how I pull data, I create the same invoice template through design accounting report, exactly like I did before. It will help me to create those structure headers because the concept behind upload, you have to map, map header of your uh, spreadsheet and fields in Xero. When you use, a, when you pull first structure from Xero, it's to give you Xero structure. Although we're not limited, you can put any name you want, but the mapping will be manual. So, all right. So now I pull structure and my next step to upload data from Google spreadsheet. So now don't try to upload again, thousand rows at once use couple lines to test and verify your selection. So this is what row you have. Uh, currently, when you start mapping, I would suggest use currently selected row. Then you can definitely specify it by date range. You can select all rows and at once, you can do new rows and we will understand. But when you select new rows, make sure when you create data, you don't have gaps because our program check for last uploaded rows and then pick up the next row. If it's gaps, we will understand, okay, nothing, nothing more to upload so it will not keep uploading stuff and then that process this uh, upload process can be laid on automated so let's say you schedule your upload for every day 6 p.m so you spend whole day preparing data your uh, your automation uh, template through workflows set up and at 6 p.m it start running so now this is how many objects available for you to upload from spreadsheet to zero accounts. It can be chart of accounts. You can do bank transactions. Uh, I point some of them, which is more popular. Uh, credit notes, absolutely invoices, including bills inside invoices, uh, manual journals, yes, purchase order quotes. So those are mo most popular. So what ability you have here? You can do in some objects or table, you can do insert and update. What do you mean insert? Insert means you add new invoices, add new journal entries, add new bills 
to zero or update. Sometimes we use it a lot like for cleaning. For example, end of the year, you said, okay, my line items and invoices are wrong and I want to update it. You dump your invoices in the spreadsheet, you update line items descriptions, and then you up update it back. So here uh, we will pick up insert. We will click my first address of the first table header cell. It's A1 in my case. You can start A2 or A10 if your header is there. So be careful here. And we will give you result of the column automatically. So the next step is mapping. So here I would like to pay your attention on the two table. This is first table fields in zero, informational only. It means it's give you ability to say what is a red start mark uh, attributes, it's mandatory fields. If you go, let's say invoices, these line items. And what does it mean? You have to have it in your mapping and those are available values. You cannot randomly select any data, those available values, which has to be in your, um, in your data. Okay, so for line items, uh, absolutely. Quantity, unit price, it's mandatory field, statuses. So if you can see here, those are statuses from uh, zero. So basically, if you randomly set up something else, it will give you error. API will not understand what you mean. So, and for me now I put authorized. If you go to zero screen, it will give you a nice message for this invoice, awaiting for payment. So. This is information only in type, absolutely, receivable, payable. So, but this on the bottom of the field, this is your real mapping. As you can see, the, I pick up column from the spreadsheet. No, I pick up program, <laughs> no, our product, pick up column from the spreadsheet. And it's very nicely automatically mapped because first I load the structure. So uh, our product is smart enough to understand how to map it. If some mapping is not working, let's say, I don't know, reference or something, you can drag and drop here. Okay. I will uncheck it because I just show you how it should be possible. So, but this is uh, this is how you uh, how you map and how you handle your template. So and now I would say okay, I highlight the uh, three rows. You don't have to physically highlight everything. I uh, I highlight these three cells and it's good enough. We do understand it's highlighted. So and then I execute this template. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to see and show you how the result look like as soon as uh, we finish upload. So I will move to the right side. And this is my result here. As you can see, it has to be gap between template. This is a gap column and result. But if you have any problem, any issues, you will have the problem very nicely explained in the error page. It will tell you, for example, type is mandatory this type or status cannot be what you said. And it's definitely, you cannot upload uh, through invoice interface paid invoices, right? Don't forget that. Paid invoices should be first, you should apply invoice payment, right? We have this object invoice payment. And then the status in zero will be changed for paid. So straightforward paid status, you cannot set up here. So now what is useful uh, stuff here? ID has been created and this is called deep link, okay? And this deep link will open zero page. And this is my test 111. This is how it looks like, okay? So this is your upload process. So I don't want to spend much time here. On concept level, it should be very clear how it works. So another uh, feature I want to show you as soon as I have time, consolidated report. So consolidated report is our new feature and I would like you guys to try. Uh, you have very nice ability here. Uh, we hook our interface, this paid uh, rate conversion interface. And it's very nicely you can generate and consolidate this report at specific time period. Okay, and uh, you have ability to choose your organization, the same concept, you choose reports. So far we create balance sheet, cash summary, p &L. So let me get, I don't know, profit and loss. The same filtering and attribute here. 
and then uh, change pool settings. Again, how your data look like. If you want to change something, your feature is here and multi -con converter. So this is a new module inside where you can have latest exchange rate from our exchange rate website, or you can customize. You can choose any uh, currency you want. You can type it inside, or you can generate exchange rate tab and use the tab as a sources, you see like this, for your report. So it's very flexible. You can do whatever you want. You can choose any date you want, refresh and generate report. So I execute now as is based on March uh, 16 um, exchange uh, currency rate. And this is how it looks. And we really, we're really looking forward for your feedback because it's a new feature. And we want to see what, what you guys think about that. All right, so this is how it looks. So this is PNL. You can definitely remove all this header and stuff here. This is your rate, and this is organizations. So for me, it's Zema company, just because I have in other companies, ABCD and this one is just zero. So nothing there, but this is how it looks. All right, so now I want to spend a little bit time to show you uh, how our data can be represented. So this is some uh, KPI template, and this is a uh, opportunity for you how to build very simple chart within spreadsheet. So this is a bunch of templates here, and I want to show you how traditional layout uh, look like versus historical. This is historical layout. This is how it looks like. So for BI presentation, BI uh, solution, this is as simple as Google chart. You can, say, you can see profit for four years. You can have turnover. I have somewhere budget versus actual, so you can do it. Or based on this data as a, example, I build a dashboard solution. This is how it looks like, okay? So it's very colorful, it's customer likes it, right? Especially a customer who doesn't want to dive inside numbers, right? But now you can see everything. So this is very nice solution. So uh, what else I'm going uh, to tell you? This is our website. So uh, Xero, one of our products, and to addition to Xero, we do have the same uh, product, not the same product, but the same uh, implementation integration, this Google uh, sheet for Workflow Max and Xero Practice Manager. If somebody used that for, for the business, uh, we do have data Google Studio so for for now it's free, but it's not completely finished. Although for one organization, it will work. So uh, then this is our pricing. So <clears throat> we have a business plan. We have uh, three group licenses <coughs> and it's separated by user and number of company. <coughs> when you select and set up account, I would say in the beginning, majority of my customers start this trial which is 14 days free, right? And you can ask us any questions. You see, you feel how tool works for you and you will start this business plan, absolutely. And then eventually when you see if it's really a tool that you was, want to use for whole team, then you move to accountant and advisor. What it gives you? It gives you ability uh, to set up uh, users, companies and restrict certain user. So let's say you have five people in the team and one of them junior, right? And junior, you don't want them to see, let's say financial uh, data for certain organization. And this junior want to run only quotes or only purchase orders. So in this case, you have the ability to create template, share this template, this specific template to this new uh, young person, right? And this person will be running reports for you and that's it. He won't be able to access anything. Or you have people who is very good in download reports and they're responsible for this, but you don't want them to do any upload and mess up data. So this restriction you can apply, uh, which you have accountant, advisor or enterprise version. So it's very, it's very flexible. 
or you can set up uh, somebody to be admin like you means they can add new users, okay? So, and um, uh, what else I'm going to show you? I'm going to show you, we do have services. We can definitely help you in setting your uh, system, uh, train your team, right? We can do that. And you can schedule one-on-one -on -one call, this me, or if you need my technical team, I can pull it. So uh, we do have partner program or expert. Uh, you can check on our website, but what I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you documentations. So this is documentations, which tell you step-by-step, -step, like if you're in a zero, how to create a report designer, how to create your custom report, how to do standard reports, how to do um, automation. I'll go a little bit here, automation. And this is how to set up even BI solution. So documentation you can reach from our website. So I want to come back to one feature which I didn't mention before. I want to emphasize a little bit. In the Gcon Fox Zero, we have under tools, change template ownership. So the concept behind each and every template uh, assigned to your specific Google account, right? So this is my Google account. So if I'm on vacation and uh, I leave the company or something else, you want to change the template ownership to somebody else. This is the place to go because if they don't change, this reassignment will not happen, and we we will be we need to do kind of reverse engineering. We will help you out, but it will take some time, right? To reset, let's say, twenty different spreadsheets, right? So change template ownership. It's a good functionality to know. So this is how you change ownership from your to somebody else. All right, <clears throat> I think. I'm done talking, so let me let me open uh, open everyone so you can ask me questions. We do have 13 minutes, so I was not I I stopped myself. So now you should be able to unmute yourself, and uh, please feel free to ask me any questions. <laughs> Hi, Elena. Hi. Hi. I'm in Florida in the United States, and I'm <laughs> curious about how we could get a payroll integration. Is that possible? Is it coming? <laughs> it's a question for Xero. <laughs> as soon as they release uh, API, we in. The moment we start, like four, four and a half years ago, they used to have it, and then they shut down. So. Uh -huh. Basically, everything based on API. As soon as they release API, we will be happy to implement it. Okay, what is actually missing? I mean, do they need to, because they use Gusto as a partner for uh, payroll. That, that's probably their own uh, vision, yes. They maybe yeah. don't want to open API for partners like us as soon as they um have joint venture this other uh, company. Yeah, it's maybe no, the, yeah, maybe the problem. Strategy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? I'm not responsible <laughs> for zero. <laughs> I could say for purchase order, for example, uh, I'm in community um, uh, chat, right? And I have so many, I receive so many emails, like people talking about purchase order for like five, six years and nothing happened, which is good for us. We give you purchase order. That's perfectly good. But will they be able to do it anytime soon? I don't think so. But what I would, I see from zero perspective, they start adding a lot of reports, which is good stuff. But again, moment they put new reports in the website, it doesn't mean they give us opportunity to pull the same reports through, uh, through API, right? I wish them uh, to do both, uh, both kind of uh, side of the of the fence. They uh, enhance their own system, plus they give us opportunity to pull the same reports to, for all of us, right? But so far it didn't happen. <laughs> So, any other questions, guys? All right. So, if you don't have any questions, I'm going to show you the uh, 
piece. I'm going to send you this, um, this website and I'm going to show you on the product description. If you go down, if you have any questions, you will send, let me see if you contact us. All right. Mm, no, it's not here. I want to show you how to contact us and um, how to uh, request Zoom call. Yeah, here it is. You can see that uh, if you need a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call, it's absolutely free. So you can set up Zoom, Zoom call uh, through this uh, support and contact info tab in our website. So if you want to email, it's nice if you're emailing to support because what's happened, it's a group email and I have technical people there so who will be able to help you. So if you send only me, so it will be only me <laughs> on this call. So you can leave your message on the phone, uh, but sometimes we pick up phone, sometimes not, it depends how busy we are. But Zoom call request and email for us, it's more efficient way to contact us. And as I said, the product uh, trials is 14 days free in case if you need more time. I know, especially in U.S., it's a tax season, right? You request, you send us email and request for extension. We have no problem to extend you. Regarding license, uh, let's say you decided to go in certain license and you start paying and eventually, oops, something happened. You don't have client, you change business, you left the company, you send us email and we cancel your subscription at the same day so no questions here so basically we don't you don't have to sign any agreement or commitment for one year like six months and so far you need us you use us you don't need us you find other tool or something happened shoot us a mail and we will resolve any issues all right so in this case, thank you very much for joining my webinar. I'm going to send this webinar to you and some other links. We do have YouTube channels. We have short videos, small videos, long videos, how to do other stuff, upload, download, automation. So I will send you all available information. So feel comfortable to try and definitely we are looking forward to have your feedback. It's important for us. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> and have a nice afternoon. Okay. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.